Hello, sir. Back in the engine room. We are with a special guest this week. Well, should we do the intro first and then see who it is? Yes. Shall we? Don't Go on then. Let's smash for it, mate, and then we'll see who's here. Let's do it. An engine corner. So, he's come to pick his car up, and I've kidnapped him to the engine room to see what's going on, but... Ta da Morning. Hello, sir. How is it going? Very good. There's a lot of engine in here. Yeah. Luckily, not yours. <laughs> <laughs> this is better than the yours in here. Oh, mate. Yeah, we've got a couple on the go, to be fair. So, we've got two McLarens, one's a GT3, and one's a road car. I've got a couple of heads to do. I got a Mercer Lago engine to do, a TTRS, the no the engine out of my Noble. Um, oh yeah, seen that yeah, on your yeah, channel. Yeah, don't. Uh, Is it not? No, oh, mate, no, it's bad. That. Mm. Don't mention the Noble. Yeah, we don't mention the Noble. It'll be amazing when it's done. It's your bad words, but yeah. when it's done, it's yeah. just rusty. Yeah. Really, really rusty. Uh, and then my Gen Four BMW engine blew up last year. Yeah. And then I've got to do that so I can sell it. So you got some work to do. Hmm. But we just waste time doing YouTube videos, mate, because it pays the bills. Yeah. <laughs> Not. <laughs> we were chatting That's about it. this, weren't we? Yeah. Like how hard it is to. Well, you need the millions of views, don't you? Yeah. Really. Yeah. 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 But yeah. It's the it's the catch in it, which is what we were chatting about, wasn't it? Is that the insight you have? I think you could. I think you could blow your channel up. I just need to look after it. Poor yeah. me, I've got no time. No, mine. which I, I've got no time at all. You've got two full-time jobs, really, haven't you? Yeah, I've got the the BT Sport, what well, TNT Sports. Yeah, uh, the, the, the the World Endurance uh, Racing and six kids, mate. So you heard that right, six kids. <laughs> all the World Championships he's won and all the money he didn't buy a telly. Yeah, well, <laughs> it didn't work very well, and then that was it. <laughs> Mate, it's because you go too many flyaways. You come back and you're excited to see each other. And, 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 That's uh, probably what it is. Uh, yeah, but we worked it out now, so, so we, we we know why. Right. We, yeah. So that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so how? Eighteen? Eighteen year old is? Uh, soon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Should be eighteen in August. Okay. Mm, eighteen, fifteen, twelve, nine, four, and two. Oosh, that's a spread. It's a spread. Yeah. And well remembered as well, I've got to yeah, say. Yeah. I struggle with two to remember the ages, so. So your lad we met, that's not, we haven't put a video out yet. He's your 11 year old, isn't he? Yeah, 12 he's year old. three. He's the number three. He's number three. Yeah. Oh, he is, that kid is quality. Mate, he gives you so much shit. He could have his own YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he gives you so much shit. <laughs> I know, yeah. But I wanted to catch you, because obviously I remember watching <clears throat> GPs when you, come through so what was your first year in gps 2001 right and it was 250s when yeah because i remember you getting on the big bikes like because that would have been what 0405 uh moto gp 2007 i was oh wow you did yeah so i did 2001 250 yeah 250 gp yeah and 2002 i was a test rider for yamaha uh gold was okay um, with the 500s yeah. still. So it was the, the year of the transition. Okay. Uh, 500 and, and MotoGP were together on track in yeah. 2002. I only did one race there, uh, but uh, I was like a test rider for, for them. And then 2003, I went back to uh, racing. Right, okay. Yeah. 2003, 4, 5, and 6. Yeah, okay. So there yeah. was just, when you went to go to work for Yamaha, there was just no seat for you? Yeah, it was more like they didn't need a test team at the time, but I, I, I met Hervé Ponchal, which yeah. was the team manager of Tech3, still the team manager of Tech3. Yeah, yeah. And we very much wanted to work together. There was no like racing seats anywhere because they, they just moved, they just won the, the 250 World Championship with Olivier Jacques. Yeah. And they moved up to 500 with Olivier yeah. and uh, Shinya Nakano right, at the time. Okay. So they had their riders, they didn't have a 250 team anymore, yeah. uh, but we wanted to work together. Okay. So we went and kind of did that. Yeah. yeah. So your test riding then goes back a long, your development yeah, riding Yeah, but goes I mean, that wasn't long. really test riding. That was just okay. riding a 500, um, getting to work with the Tech Free team. Yeah. And we did a wild card as well. And that was like a replacement rider just in case. Okay. So it was like a, 
a bit like what F1 does. Yeah. yeah or, 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 yeah, and you doing it a yeah, like a reserve type of, yeah. Uh, it was a good experience. It's yeah. what them 500s like. Yeah, they were quite wide. Um, I, I mean, the memories I've got is, I've got, I can remember a few high sides. And uh, that year we had electronic stir. Okay. Very like early days yeah. type of stuff, but there was some kind of traction control on it. Yeah. But yeah, it didn't work very well. <laughs> sky ground, sky ground. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I've, I've ridden a 250 GP bike, but I've not ridden a 500 GP bike. Yeah, the 500 was light. Well, it is compared to, like, say, a MotoGP four stroke or, yeah. or super bikes. It wasn't that powerful. It was only, I think it was just under 200 horsepower, so it wasn't really not that powerful. super powerful. <laughs> but it was just super light. I, yeah. I can't remember what the weight was, but was it Must 130 bit, kilos? Right. I was going to say, it's got to be under 140 kilos. Yeah, it was very, very light. And crap tires compared to now, like. Probably, yeah. It's difficult to say now because so many years, you know, of yeah. like evolutions. But um, yeah, it was it was um, um, just the the power to weight ratio was good. Okay. Yeah. So two thousand one, then you would have been how old? Um, um, to nineteen. Right. Okay. Yeah. So when did you start racing? Because uh, that's 12. Not, when you were twelve. 12. Yeah. French okay. French Championship scooters. Was it really? Yeah. It was like, what, like Vespa scooters. Yeah, like type of scooter. Yeah, yeah this yeah. type of scooter is fifty cc. Okay. So that was ninety five. Yeah. Yeah, first year, and then I raced scooters ninety five, ninety six, uh, one two five. It was like a um, CG cup. It was called. Okay. Two uh, ninety seven. CGs were yeah, four stroke though. Yeah, they were like little four stroke. Le- yeah, so like slow. commuter was, bikes. Was, yeah, they were slower than the scooters. No way. Yeah, but everybody had the same. So it was like a brown. Uh, yeah, you know, one, is like yeah, one, yeah, make, one make championship, yeah, yeah, yeah. so like R6 Cup and all that's that. Kind it, of thing. That's it, that's yeah. it, uh, and it was all like so. Basically, it was it was inexpensive, and you could race everybody with the same bike. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so it's two years of scooters, a year of CG yeah. Cup, then one year of Aprilia Cup, one two five. Right. Same with the road bike, the Aprilia RS. It was called that. Yeah. Um, and. Yeah, and then the year that won that, so the year after, I had a, a year in 125 Open, it was called, it was like basically GP bikes. Okay. We went Aprilia, 98. But still in France. Uh, it wasn't world champion, you were still... Sorry, 99 that was. Yeah. And then, and then yeah, still in France. Yeah. And then at the end of that, I was going to stop, because it was just too expensive. The, like the GP bikes were really expensive. Yeah. So I was going to stop, but there was a structure in France called Equipe de France. Okay. Uh, where they used to take select one lad every year, and then they give you the chance to race in French and European Championship with two fifty with two fifty Grand Prix bike. Yeah. I mean, that was like proper, like full, like they, they would just look after everything. Didn't okay. have to pay anything. Wow. Um, and I won that at the end of ninety nine. So then two thousand, I did that one French Championship and European Championship. So we nearly didn't have you then. Yeah, I nearly stopped. Yeah, at the end of ninety eight. Yeah, nearly wow. stopped. Well, I actually stopped at the end of 98 and then I got the call to go and do this and I thought, well, I've got nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah. So, won there and won it. That's so, mental. Yeah. And then then uh, 2000, that's it. French Championship, which I won with the 250 and European Championship finished third. Yeah. And 2001 in Grand Prix. Yeah, in Grand Prix. Yeah. So, it went from like nothing to Grand Prix in like a year. So, so it was bikes from your dad? Yeah. Yeah. Did he race or did he just love bikes? He did a few races like with mopeds and scooters okay. and stuff like that with his mates just as a loft basically. Yeah. They, did, they did that, they did, um, um, my granddad was like, I never knew him because he died just before I was born, but he was into bikes as well. So it was like right, a family okay. thing. Yeah. So it's all like the only sort of crossover I said, we were chatting about Leon, is almost a little bit like Leon. Because he did CB cut CB five hundreds, didn't he? So he kind of did. Yeah. No, all right, he had a long history of motocross, but then all of a sudden he jumped very, very quickly. Yeah. From shit bikes to, to GP bikes. Proper GP bikes. Yeah. You don't get that anymore. No, I mean, like even Rory, who's probably the last Brit to jump that high. Yeah. Even he's kind of gone up and down and up and. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like he did. What do you do? Talent Cup. Yeah, then I mean it, it's difficult to. The, the the thing is now you you have to. Uh, the, the, I think the competition now is so fierce. It's yeah. difficult to 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 be making like huge jumps like that. And at the time, we we're probably given a little bit more time. 
Yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's, a, it's a, yeah. Everything is more structured now, probably. Well, yeah, I I agree, I agree with the competition because it. I suppose really you could sit there and you go, Nicky Hayden, you, Leon, um, John Hopkins. Yeah. John, John went from the the American Championship to, to 500 yeah yeah like yeah. quite big you know whereas yeah. you go alright like um, Jake yeah like for him to get a GP seat how many years has he had in yeah, Moto2 I think it's his fifth year now four, four or fifth year and he's probably one of the most talented Brits in the world mm. yeah yeah but the but thing the is opportunities did the John and and it, and it's hard if you go that way, yeah, yeah, going yeah. from superbikes to uh, prototype racing, like Moto Two, very 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 hard to do that kind of transition. You have to be like a natural, and then also you have to then uh, the team is important. Yeah. So if you don't perform really well because the team because the the, the, the guys are so close and tight, the, the, you know the times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The team makes a huge difference. Yeah. So guys like Jay, it just I, yeah, it took him time to get up to speed and. He's probably now faster than ever. Yeah. But when he was riding for Petronas, maybe he was just as quick as where he is now. Sometimes yeah, it just but it, it doesn't click like yeah, it yeah, click the same. Yeah. So uh, it's not it's not it's not easy that. So how did you? Because obviously you did Suzuki MotoGP test rider. We yeah. jumped a bit, but also then world endurance on a production yeah. bike. Yeah. How do you manage jumping? Oh, from one to another. Yeah. Um, they well, I've I've ridden GP bikes before, um, so in 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 MotoGP two thousand eight and nine, sorry seven and eight. Yeah. And did quite a lot of testing as well. Then the testing with with Suzuki. Suzuki. Yeah. And then the super bikes I rode from two thousand and nine. Uh, that was in BSB. Yeah. Uh, two thousand ten, then World Superbike, and then up to until two thousand sixteen. So I've got quite a bit of experience with both bikes. Right. So you kind of like the brain just. Yeah, you can kind of, kind of jump between the two. Yeah, it kind of switches, uh, but naturally I'm better on a superbike. Right. I don't know. Because you've just spent more time on it, you think? No, I think just because like natural, you know, like natural instincts. You have, you, you, you have like a certain riding style, and mine works well. It yeah. works better with with superbikes. Because you, you start like now you start looking at riding styles as well. You, Johnny Ray, is still that quite conservative sort of riding yeah. style in the center of the bike yeah yeah whereas you like look at the smallest guy on the gp grid or him up and he can put his shoulder down and that's it yeah i don't know how they do that the well we did it's just um it's the way you learn i think they 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 just learn like that and it works better for gp bikes anyway yeah. for like prototype stiff you know gp bikes it works better because those bikes naturally don't really want to turn so you need to make them turn with your shifting your body weight. Yeah. So that's why they hang off so much. With a with a super bike, if you do that, it kind of like unsettles the bike a bit. Mm -hmm. So because it's a bit more lively and yeah. a bit more, it, it twists more. And so you you're actually better on a super bike to not to stay, hang off that much. Yeah. And if you look at even if you look at Toprak for example, yeah, he yeah. doesn't he doesn't hang off that that much because he needs to be. You need to be a bit central yeah. on the bike to keep it in line. His riding style is almost like the anti-GP riding style as well, isn't it? Like, yeah, how out of shape he goes in. That's why. That's why he struggled when he tried the the GP bike. Right. It's not. It's not the same riding style. And yeah, yeah, he would have. I think if he'd gone that route, he, yeah, he yeah, would, yeah, that would have took him a long, long time yeah. to adapt. Yeah, it would have been hard. Yeah, yeah. It's so. What's the Jump in front. What's the hardest part then of going? Because you always sort of hear people say, like on a GP bike, you've got to carry the brake in so hard into the turn on a GP bike to keep the front loaded. But what's the hardest thing jumping back and forth? No, the um, um, the hardest thing is that with a GP bike, you need to, you can't like override the bike too much okay you have to you have to ride in within the bike yeah as in with superbike you can be kind of dominant as a rider you can kind of force the bike to do what you want yeah. it to do uh, with gp bike not so it right. doesn't it doesn't work like that so 
the electronics are not as good on a GP on a on GP because of single ECU and single yeah. I, IMU. So you can't they can't the factories can't implement the tr- the strategies yeah. that they well they could do a lot better yeah. if they if that if that was free uh, in within the rules. Yeah. So the riders have to control a lot with the with the hand actually. Okay. They, they, there's a lot of um, um, a lot of the riders have to make the lap time by not overriding the bike and just riding it in a proper way. Okay. So yeah, and you got you got all that power that is not really very, really well managed. This is why the manufacturers came up with the wings, the aero, yeah, yeah, yeah. the ride height devices. Yeah. It's all about making all that power more efficient because they couldn't do it with the electronics anymore because of the the single ECU and and, yeah. and not being able to work on the electronics like they used to be. So um, they found all these tricks to you know to make the bike more efficient. Yeah. But then riding style wise, it's uh, it's 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 much harder to ride a GP bike, a GP, a Moto GP bike fast than it is uh, a super bike, in oh, my opinion. Alvaro's kind of the walking, talking version of that at the minute, isn't he? Got off a GP bike. Yeah, but Alvaro is a GP rider to start with. And yeah, it, and it, and he was. I mean, you could say you can't. He was on factory bikes. Like he'd been with Suzuki for a while, and I think he got a couple of races on the factory Ducati. He replaced somebody when he was riding for the uh, Aspar team. Yeah. On the private Ducati, uh, but it was a different time, and he never really. I mean, even though the Suzuki at the time was a factory bike, it wasn't yeah. a bike to win the championship no, or yeah, to be yeah. winning races. Yeah, really, yeah. Uh, yeah. the only one that won races was uh, was it Chris Verminen in Le Mans? Yeah, in yeah. And yeah. Did John Hopkins win some with the? I don't think. Yeah, I think oh, he got he did. podiums, didn't he? But yeah, he got podiums, think, but yeah. Because yeah. so, I always remember Chris Vermeulen into Happen going in backwards the wrong way. Yeah, do you remember he used to do it down the long straight? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so it, it's like Bautista is actually a, a, a really good GP right? Yeah. And it's but no surprise that he adapted so well. That, and then you, the Ducati is a good bike. Yeah, but he but he's still it, got to pedal it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, he, and no one can touch him. He makes a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no one can touch him. Yeah, difference. And it, it, the bike is, okay, the bike is a bit faster in a straight and his weight and all this talking, yeah. you know, he's small and he's aero and that. But still, it's the way he rides the bike. He yeah, makes yeah. he rides the bike in the way that this bike needs to be ridden. Yeah, and he makes a he makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. I think it like looking at world superbikes, and then you look at British. So this weekend now, you think the Yamaha has been the most dominant bike over the last couple of seasons in British. Yeah, but the only track that ever shows the Yamahas up is Snetterton. Yeah, you could see how slow it was. Yeah, yeah. And it's almost like the same kind of thing. If you probably took well, you do get it, don't you? Where you take the World Superbike calendar to a bike where a track that doesn't have four, fifth, six gear straights, yeah, and the Yamaha's in the fight, and then you go to a track where the Ducati can stretch its legs, yeah, and you've got, and it was the same this weekend, Leon on the on a rocket, and then yeah. the two Ducatis, yeah, yeah, mate, they were like streets ahead. They were very fast. Oh. I was a bit surprised by the. I mean, the the BMW was really fast, and Brooks as well. Yeah, yeah. So the the engines are proper quick, strong. Yeah, really strong. Yeah. Have you had that on your dyno? Uh, no, because mine's car dyno. You haven't got. Yeah. A bike uh, dyno. No, I got a bike yeah. dyno. Uh, if I had a bike dyno, we'd never get any work done, around <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> but it's like my. I I had a Gen. I had a Gen Four, so not the M. Yeah. I had the old BMW. Oh, uh, the one we. Road Don the one I had at Donington. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like a two hundred and ten horsepower six hundred. Yeah. In that I had an R one, and you, I just couldn't hold on to it out off the turn. We had too much bottom end. Yeah. Whereas that BMW, you could like let well, it less, race less torque initially. Yeah. You mean. yeah. yeah. And yeah. then it just literally just disappear. Yeah. And it's the the power is at the top end. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I think like the Yamaha works. Like your assins and your stuff like that, where it's, yeah, yeah, where it's flowing, yeah, it's amazing on the side of the tire, yeah. And then you go to Aragon, which shows up them every year, yeah. And the Ducati is just disaster, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the more the funny bit in Aragon is the more the tires get used, yeah, they can't get the exit out of that air into the straight, yeah. So they can't get the side grip, and then the worst it gets for the for yeah. the Yamas, yeah, yeah. And you can see them; they're just standing still, yeah, yeah. compared. So between. We go jump back. So six, you were two fifty still. Yeah. Seven, you were then Merc GP. Yeah, with the Yamaha Dunlop. Yeah. 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 And then eight Pramac. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then nine, you were 
Nine by uh, BSV. BSV. Yeah, BSV, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Did a bit of Three. BSV and then a lot of hospital. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I was just about, I was going to say we're getting to that. So, what happened? Was there nothing for you at the end of eight then? Yeah, the, um, at the end of eight, with the, the year was quite difficult with the, with the Pramac. We didn't want, um, yeah, the, the result weren't very good. I had a couple of results, like decent results, like I think wet, one in the wet in Saxon Ring or something, I was yeah. fifth or sixth or something like that. So would that have been the yeah. 07 bike back then, like Casey's old bike? Yeah, it was only Casey could make that work. Uh, I was just about um, to say, like only Marquez can make Honda work. Yeah, it was, I mean, I remember looking at his data just thinking, no way, like no chance. Just, what? Very, just very talented, just In, very good. Because I, I think we've, I, I always thought if, if Casey had never left GPs, Marquez wouldn't have been who, I, I think Casey's probably the most naturally able rider I've ever seen on a bike. Yeah, he's, well, he's one of them, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Case, case what he was could like, do, what he could do back then. Yeah, like you, you must have heard his stories where he's like stone a corner at Australia, where he spins the bike so he can't lose the front going in. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, uh, they kind <laughs> of like they kind of all do that now a little bit. Yeah, but it's but at the do time, you want to be the first guy to do that? Yeah, at the time it was really special. Yeah, and also doing it with that bike. I mean, Casey in Australia especially in Australia was like it was just mind something else yeah yeah yeah. because it wasn't just that it was doing it with corner speed with control with yeah uh, yeah it was very good so like going back then when you were on that bike and you'd look at his data what was it just the depressing that's what it was (laughs) just the aggression of what how we'd get on no it wasn't aggressive at all actually it was just all controlled but it was just uh, very very smooth and very um, yeah very efficient right Mm. Yeah, and just literally end of that year, then no seat in GPs. No, so yeah, it, that ended, and so um, ended up in. Uh, I, I just wanted to at that time. I, I'd been struggling for a best. So I just wanted to get back somewhere where I could start uh, winning stuff. Enjoying your racing. Yeah, yeah, just just be competitive. Yeah. So uh, BSB was uh, was 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 great, and uh, um, so I joined uh, Crescent. Yeah. And the bike, I knew the bike was yeah. good and competitive, and yeah. So that, that's that. The idea was to just get bike, and I lived in England then. Yeah. Then anyway. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it was convenient. So I thought, yeah, I'll go and do that. Yeah. And then it. Then it lasted two it, races. Yeah. Then the the accident, uh, broken leg, and yeah. that took a long time to. Because that was warm up lap as well, wasn't it? It was a grid. It was out, like a formation, formation lap. lap. Yeah. So if anyone doesn't know. Go and look at it. It's Josh Brooks at Melbourne Hairpin, and he was tapped when he yeah, was on, he, on a formation lap trying to, and he basically t-boned you at Melbourne Loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was. Uh, it, I mean, that could have been a lot worse when you when you look at it. I remember it, it was it was quite quite bad. Was that the same season he wiped everyone out at Mallory as well? No, I think so. Yes. Yeah. Or was it the year after? Because he got. He had the book thrown at him for that as well, didn't he? Like, that, mate, that was horrific. That's that was. Yeah, I think the Mar- well, obviously Murray was different because that was a racing incident. Yeah, uh, that was racing. He just missed his breaking point a bit, and it, you know when you get to the before the airpin, there's a bit, there's a few bumps. So he just he just lost control yeah. there, and kind of. So that was that was a separate. Yeah. Is that your worst injury? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably yeah, on par with the Imola 2016. The the one the high side with the Yamaha that was that was paid for right okay yeah um, but yeah it took a long time to recover because the leg was like it was like compound fracture and it was all a mess yeah so yeah mm, no good right we're gonna pause a sec thank you so much for part one mate I think we have to split it because we just spent hours chatting we run out here yeah. I know in the motor mug <laughs> yeah, you're such a hour. sponsors you're a sponsors wet dream mate you always, always tell you you always have to look after I bet if we unzip that top says RST <laughs> is that right? no oh. <laughs> so not this time join us part two